Hello and welcome to Meet SRU faculty. To, my name is Erin O'Dell and today joining us is Dr. Mitchell Church, um, Assistant Professor from the Computer Science Department. Welcome. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, let's get started. Um, I understand, Dr. Church, that you're a new facu faculty member at uh, SRU. What brought us, brought, what, what brought you here today? So there are a few things I really like about uh, SRU. The first is I, I really like the area a lot. I, I have young kids and it was really important to me that they have you know, plenty, of, plenty of land to run around on and, and the ability to get outside. And I tell you, um, I think that this summer that I've been up here, the weather's been so nice, I think they've been outside more this summer than their entire lives uh, until yeah. now. So. The second thing is uh, it really was a good fit um, for what I do. Um, I'm, I'm actually in, in a discipline that they call information systems, and sometimes that is uh, not really associated with computer science. But the research that I do is, is definitely computer science research, and so being able to find a department uh, that would allow me to work, uh, also you know, dealing with business students, but working in a computer science department was, was just a really good fit for me, both personally and professionally. Good, good, good. Um, so what classes do you currently teach this semester? So this semester I teach two classes. Uh, the first one is called Database Concepts, and that's more of a technical class where we teach students how to actually design databases that would be used by an organization. So we talk about not only the needs uh, that organizations might have around database technology, but also how to design those databases and how to implement them in a way that an organization could actually make use of. Uh, the other class is, is more of a, um, it's called Management Information Systems. Mm -hmm. And it's really more of a business class. Most of the students are business students. And there we talk about using information technology to really just make money for companies. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of times you'll hear people talk about these new technologies that come out, whether it's an iPad, and, you know, an iPhone, or some type of new computer, new processor. And, and what we really do is say, okay, we have all these things that we can go out and buy as a business, but how are we going to be able to capitalize on that and actually turn these devices, this software, this technology into revenue for the company? Okay, very nice. And I understand that um, project management is another interest of yours, a class right. that you might possibly want to teach in the future. Right, so I'm going to teach that uh, the next semester, and, and that is a class, too, where we, we really focus on how can we take uh, the needs of a business in terms of managing projects, managing personnel, and use technology that's available to try and make that process as efficient as possible. Okay. Because in, in information technology, we have a history sometimes of projects getting too big, mm -hmm. uh, projects costing too much money, and really putting organizations at risk because they're getting overcommitted mm -hmm. and uh, spending you know, way too much of a company's resources trying to trying to handle what is really going to be an unsuccessful project. Mm -hmm. And those are the things we try to avoid in, in project management. Yeah, okay. Um, so I understand you have a PhD from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little about a, a little bit more about your educational background and kind of the process of getting your PhD. So I was, uh, I, I mean, I guess everyone probably says this, but I was a little unusual in the sense that I uh, did not did not really study computer science, did not study technology when I was an undergraduate. So mm -hmm. actually, um, I, I took classes in, in Greek and Latin, believe it or not. So. That, was, uh, that gave me, though, a really good basis from which to sort of continue the rest of my learning. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I went out and applied for jobs, you know, no one ever says, uh, Greek, well, that must have been easy. You know? So it was, it was really easy to get my foot in the door with a lot of companies, and I actually got into business sales, uh, selling technology, different types of technology packages. And so um, as a result of that, I then went on and uh, was able to get back into graduate school for information technology and computer science. Okay. And then after doing my master's, I went straight into my, my PhD. Okay, awesome. Um, so we're going to take a short commercial break right now, but we'll be back with me, SRU faculty. Hi, this is Madison from TV Naturally in the Library. Hi, I'm Jamie. Hi, I'm Lori Martella from the History Department. Hi, I'm Dr. Marshall from the Communication Department. Hi, my name is Rita. My name is Meg Bean. Hi, my name is Chris Liberty. I'm Steve Luter, a student here at Slippery Rock. Hey, I'm Cody Moody. And I'm Tim Durr. You're watching Channel 27. Channel 27. Where you're watching WSRU 27. Channel 27. And you're watching WSRU TV Channel 27. Make sure you tune into Channel 27. And we watch uh, WSRU Channel 27. And I'm watching WSRU Channel 27 and you're watching WSRU Channel 27. And I watch WSRU TV Channel 27.
Welcome back. We are talking with Dr. Mitchell Church. Uh, I have some more questions for you. Sure. I understand you had a work published um, in the Journal of Electronic Commerce Research in 2012. Can you tell us a little bit about that and kind of the process that you went through? Sure. So, so a lot of the work that I do studies um, what, what we call electronic word of mouth communication. And this mm -hmm. is something that uh, everyone is engaged in, whether you're on Facebook, um, whether you're buying things off of Amazon. It's basically anytime anyone is, is talking to their friends or to people that they know or to other potential customers about different products, mm -hmm. uh, we call that electronic word of mouth. And so in that paper, um, what I did is I, I really compared different systems for uh, letting people go online and read customer reviews to try to figure out uh, what what is actually the most useful you know what what kind of presentation uh, for customer reviews is is the best in terms of allowing them to make you know good informed decisions because these days uh, you can go online and, and for, for popular products you might see thousands of, of customer reviews and it can be really hard for people to uh, make sense of that to try mm -hmm. to figure out uh, you know how do I get my head around you know all this data mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's what that paper is about, and that's really uh, what, what most of my research has been about. Okay. And, you know, what, what was uh, going through your head when you found out, you know, that this was going to be published? I mean, that's a big moment, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a milestone when you're, when you're working on your Ph.D. to, to get articles uh, out and get them published. Um, you know, that's actually a requirement for, for getting a Ph.D. is that mm -hmm. you have to publish work. So uh, it is very competitive. Um, it is very hard. You know, there's a process where you write what you think is just the best paper and you send it off and the reviewers come back and you find out your your best paper maybe wasn't so good mm -hmm. but uh, through that process of collaboration and 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 just editing and revision um, I think I think you end up with something that's that's pretty good and I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of that one. Okay, and you worked with someone on that? Yeah, I worked with uh, a couple of the people back at uh, University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Okay, yeah. awesome. Um, and then would you mind explaining to us um, some more further research that you've done? I know that Pinterest has been a, a big interest of yours. Right. So uh, my, wife, my wife was just sitting there one day using Pinterest, and she uses it a lot. And she said, hey, you know, you should do some research on Pinterest. And I said, well, what is that? You know, I had never heard of that. And, and when I looked at it, I said, well, this is, this is just word of mouth, like what I had already been studying. It's just in a different form. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you know, for, for anyone who's familiar with Pinterest, they know that instead of reading a lot of, you know, reviews or reading a lot of text, we're really just sharing pictures. Mm -hmm. And technology has gotten us to the point that we can actually spread word of mouth information, you know, through the sharing of pictures very recently. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just been, it's just been really exciting. I mean, uh, Pinterest is something that's, you know, only come along in the last uh, couple years, but, but I read just the other day that it's the fastest growing website just in history, that mm -hmm. no other website has gotten to the number of users that they have. I think it's something like 20 million now uh, in as short of a time. So uh, I really feel like, like, like myself and, and my co-authors have hit on something that um, should provide a, a really fertile stream of research for you know what I hope will be the next the next five years. Right. Um, is there any other like further research? You know, like what do you want to focus on? You know, in the upcoming years. Well, so uh, again, you know, I think that that word of mouth research I find I find very interesting, but but really just all types of uh, sort of strange behavior that you see on 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 websites. Like for example, just the other day. I was thinking about how strange it is that when you go to sometimes to a company's page on Facebook, mm -hmm. they want you to to like their page before you can even see it. Mm -hmm. And and so you know I thought that was that was just a little weird. And any time that you see something that uh, companies are doing online that's uh, maybe just a little bit out of the ordinary or, mm -hmm. or maybe not something that we would historically see, um, those are opportunities for for research. And mm -hmm. and it really is interesting. Um, you know, when you start a PhD, and for anyone who's considering going into graduate school and doing uh, original research, you, you know, you start out saying, well, what could I work on? You know, uh, what, what ideas could I have that people haven't thought of? Mm -hmm. and, and the funny thing is, is that somewhere along the way, somewhere during that process, uh, you end up with just way too many ideas mm -hmm. and, and just way more work than you could ever actually get done. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a good place to be. And um, I don't, I don't imagine that I'll finish the, the work that I've got planned uh, anytime soon. So. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. It'll give you something to look forward to. Right. And so um, to, f to finish up, uh, do you have any advice for, you know, students who are, you know, getting their undergrad and kind of thinking about further education? Well, I, you know, I have advice for, for really just anyone who's, who's at uh, SRU and, and trying to go out into the workforce and, and, and get jobs. You know, it's not easy these days to find something, but what I always tell people is 
um, you just have to make you just have to convince uh, someone who's who's a hiring manager or who's a you know president of a company that you're interviewing with that what you what you accomplished was was hard mm -hmm. and was difficult and that you know you're someone who finishes um, what you start mm -hmm. and and the only other thing I always tell people is you know you always have to ask for the job mm -hmm. you know anytime you're in front of someone that that has something that you want whether it's a you know a job that you're trying to get or an opportunity that that you would like to take advantage of mm -hmm. make sure you ask you know just tell them this is a job I'm interested in right. you, know, you know can I come and work for you mm -hmm. and it's amazing how few people really do that and and it's amazing how much of a difference that really makes right. in an interview or, or or just in life in general right well, thank you so much. I think that's all the time we have. Um, thank you again for joining us. Thank and you. this was Dr. Mitchell Church. Thank you.